said, my name is Gwen Thomas, and welcome to the Women's Intercultural Exchange um, track. You have the official name in your program, and you'll see the what Your World track. Let me close in the gap. Then Jolly Chen. Everybody always gets confused how to pronounce Jolly, but it's Jolly, right? In terms of, forget the phonetics that you see on the screen, but it's Jolly Chen, uh, CEO and Chief Strategist of Value Growth Institute. Now, what is uh, one outdoor extreme sport that you have done before? Name one outdoor extreme sport you have done before. Ooh, I'm sorry? Snowboarding. Snowboarding. Parachuting. Parachuting, yes. Helicopters. Great, great, great. Yes. Hero skiing. Hero skiing. Wow. Fabulous. Well, I have one opportunity this summer to do my first white water rafting trip. I did that before. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but you see, I don't swim, <laughs> so I insist upon that I have to sit closest to my rafting guide there. Like that. Yeah. Now this was uh, this picture was taken on uh, the entire trip was two hours on the Nataha River. Yeah, it's the coldest uh, coldest river in North Carolina. The whole purpose of the two hours trip was to deal with this nine foot drop, which you probably couldn't see it on the screen, but it was a nine foot drop to make sure that none of us get food out of the boat. Now, uh, during that day, I couldn't help but to notice that um, even though it was really heart pounding tr trip, because it's very scary, at the same time it's fun because all the water, you know, splashing you and you get soaking wet. But I couldn't help but to notice that there were so many boats that got stranded to the side of the riverbanks, as well as many of them were stuck in the middle of the river. And so I couldn't help but to ask my guy Lee, I say, why is that? And this is what he said to me. He said that, you know, people wants to come out of this trip by saving money and go on the trip by themselves. And that's what happened. Only the experienced guy who are familiar with this river can help you navigate and maneuver to the finish line successfully. Mm -hmm. Now, in business, in my experience, entrepreneurs are risk takers and statistically back that up. Now, in this picture, you will see four families in here, and this is my husband's family. So the total of four families. How many of the four families actually are risk takers are in small business? Take a guess. All of them. Uh, there's only four families. Only <laughs> <laughs> one. one. Yeah. All four? No. Uh, well, two. Two out of four um, are small business. And in the center, you will see my father-in-law, who just turned 83 this year, he is an extremely successful businessman. So as you can see, one family, 50% of that, is taking the risk. So statistically speaking, from Small Business Administration, every six new business open, how many of them will actually survive till year five? How many say one. six? Five? Three? Three. One, yes. One. One, yes. One out of every six new business open, only one will survive out of the year five. Now, so that is a lot of risk. But what about those businesses that are survived? How many of those actually make it to multi-million dollars company? Is it 50%? No. 25%? 25. Less than five. Less than 5% will have more than a million dollars annual revenue. So that's a lot of risk. Let's take a look at women businesses. How many of those women businesses not only survived and they become multi-million dollars company? Is it five? Four? What about three? Three. Yeah. Less than three percent of women business owners have more than a million dollars revenue. So we've got a lot to catch up and men business is actually of less than 6%. But there are so many mistakes that I saw a lot of small business make along the way. And there are top three mistakes I'm going to share with you today 
um, and you must avoid them if you are serious to take your business to the next level. Just like my white water rafting experience, without the right guy to run your business with you, you probably don't know how are you going to be successfully continuing to run despite the economy. And how do you know you're going to sustain a healthy profit margin? So these are the three mistakes. Number one, you must avoid having no sustainable economic engine. You must avoid having no sustainable economic engine. Number two, avoiding only utilizing push marketing in your business. Number three, not too late. I'll share that. I'll come back to that. Um, having lack of predictable profits. Having lack of predictable profits. So you're probably asking, well, that's a lot of mistakes to write down, and, and I just want to know how do I actually avoid these mistakes, right? We like to share recipes, so I'm going to share with you how you how do you actually avoid these three mistakes. Step number one: you must revisit your business model often. All right, business model has to be revisited because economy change, industry change. Regulation change, you must revisit your business model often. So the question to you is, what is a business model? What is a business model? I'm sorry? It's a plan that tells you who your customers are, what products you're delivering, um, and, and those types of things. It's a decision okay. of what, what and who you are in the market. Okay. Anybody else? Model that's been um, demonstrated by other businesses and other folks, um, people have developed. Okay, good. Based on how they have profited. Okay, very good. I would like to say your business blueprint. How do you steer your business based on that? Good, very good. Okay, let me summarize for you. Business model has three major components, and all of you hit all of that. The very first component is your business purpose. Business purpose. The second component is your business core competencies. Core competencies. The third component that you must have is your profit formula. Your profit formula. When you revisit your business model often, you wanted to make sure all these three major components are aligned properly. Think of your business as sitting on top of a three-wheel car. What if one or two of the wheel is deflated? What do you think is going to happen? Down. <laughs> yes, yes. So you want to make sure not only you, your business model is up to date, they are inflated, all these three components are inflated properly so you can run smoothly. The second step is to identify your market makers. Identify your market makers. Now, a lot of businesses out there that I know of do really, really good at push marketing. Does anybody know what push marketing is? Yes? Okay, campaign. Okay, yes? You're pushing your product onto your customer base. Right. Right. So push Branding. marketing, yes? Branding. Branding, yes. Push marketing is just like that. It's advertising, it's campaign, it is social media, it's phone book listing, it's a direct mail. All the tools are going on and on and on. However, very, very few companies actually know, I'm, I'm talking about small and sized businesses, that actually know how to deploy pull marketing. When you have effective pull marketing, that means that you are actually pulling all resources as well as your customers to you. Having the effective pull marketing in place, that requires you to have transparent market makers. So what is market maker? And let me give you the definition. Market makers are business entities that has exactly your ideal client profile. Market makers are business entity that has exactly your ideal client profiles. Think of it this way. If you work with a market maker, they are just like your sponsor. They sponsor you as a small mid-sized businesses. 
And both of you strategically grow over time because you can expand the market together better than just having you expanding the market. So you wanted to make sure that you identify the right market makers to increase the sales of your company. Market makers is not something that you can develop, develop overnight. You want to make sure that this is a long-term strategic relationship that you develop. Now, in the past several years, I actually developed eight different market makers. It takes time, and it also takes time to maintain them. Step number three, you must know your numbers. If you are in business, you must know your numbers. Numbers, or if that, let me just take one step back. Business finance and personal finance do not have to be that difficult. And the reason for that is, if you can break the number down to a very small number, it will be very easy to understand. And write this down. Numbers, in general, are helping you to make informed decisions. So numbers, in general, are making, helping you to make informed decisions. So what do you do that? How do you do that in the small business world? You want to make sure that you have a set of KPI, which is Key Performance Indicator. You want to have a set of Key Performance Indicators. The key performance indicators are nothing more than a set of very, very, very small numbers that has some meaning to you, is easy to understand, and that you and your team can communicate with that numbers and you together can make the right decision for your business. So you want to make sure that you have a set of key performance indicators. Regularly monitor them and then make changes along the way. Now, just like my white water rafting experience that I explained earlier, with, without the right guide helping you to grow your business, you probably would not know which one of the three steps that I mentioned is the priority for your business to move forward. Now, I have extremely limited time today to share with you the information, but I have two things I wanted to give it to you if you are interested. One is that I typically do this presentation for 30 minutes, but I only have 10 today. So I have the entire presentation. If you like it, provide me with your information. I'll be happy to send an email copy to you. The second thing that I wanted to share with you is that I will give you three chapters to preview on my award-winning book, Show Me the Money, Run Your Business Like a Prosperous Investor. This book is going to help you build your business valuable so you can finally achieve your financial independence. Thank you, ladies.